In this video, I'm gonna show you some of the most important software that I think you should install as soon as you have a new Windows computer, or even if you've got a older Windows computer and you want to optimize it to stop tracking and to de-bloat it. Use the timestamps below to jump to the relevant parts of the video. A lot of people will say the best thing that you can do is install Linux. And I think there are a lot of use cases for that, but it doesn't apply to everyone. So if you want to use Windows or you're forced to use Windows, I'm gonna show you how to de-bloat it and make it run better so that you're not tracked as much by Microsoft and that you're not running a bunch of trash on your computer. Now, before we continue, this video is not sponsored. I'm just recommending the software because the software is fantastic. I found it really useful, recommended by many other people in the industry. Go and have a look at videos online talking about Chris's tool as well as Reva Uninstaller. Highly recommend that you look at the software, free software that you can download and use to optimize your Windows installation and make your life better. So in this example, once again, I've got a brand new Windows laptop. So the first thing I'm gonna do is specify my language. In my example, it's English. I'm based in the UK, so I'm gonna specify UK. Keyboard is gonna be UK. Obviously, you would just choose the relevant options for your country. I'm not gonna add a second keyboard. At this point, I don't wanna to connect to the Wi-Fi network. I don't wanna create an online Windows account. I am going to set up a local Windows account only. So I'm gonna click on this window so that it has focus and then I'm going to press Shift F10 so that a command prompt shows up. I'll change the font here just to make it a bit bigger and easier to read. And now what I can do is use the special command start ms hyphen or dash cxh colon local only. That command will allow me to create a local Windows account rather than being forced to use an online account. I don't wanna use an online account, so I'm going to use that command. And notice I can now specify a user on this computer. I'll specify a user of David and press enter. Notice I didn't have to set up a password. In this example, my password was blank. I didn't have to set up password hints. I simply entered a blank password to skip all of those options. That will allow me to set up a password later, but not setting up a password speeds this up. I don't want to set up more tracking and more junk from Asus, so I'm going to simply click next here. And there you go, as simple as that, I can set up a local Windows account. I'm now asked to set up stuff like locations. I don't want to do that. I don't want to set up find my device. I don't want to send diagnostic information to Microsoft. I don't want to improve inking and typing. I don't want to get a so-called tailored experience with diagnostic data. I don't want Microsoft tracking me. I don't want to use an advertising ID. I'm going to say no to use presence sensing. And there you go, I'm now logged in to Windows. So simple as that to set up a local Windows account. But in typical Windows fashion, with a laptop like this, notice I get a bunch of bloatware on my laptop. So you might have a bunch of other trash showing up here, but you know, I don't want all of this trash on my laptop. I wanna remove all of this trash, all of the bloatware, all of the tracking. I don't want Microsoft to constantly track me. So we're gonna use one of Chris Titus's tools, fantastic tool that allows us to remove a bunch of nonsense. Now, if you know the command, you can type it directly. I'll link it below. But otherwise, you can just search for his tool online. Again, I'm not gonna allow Edge to track me. So I'm not going to allow all of these options. And I'm simply gonna search for Chris Titus tool. One of the first things I would do here is download Brave and get rid of Edge. Now, notice I'm not connected to the internet. This laptop hasn't been connected to the internet. So what I'll do is connect it via this ethernet cable to my Starlink. And there you go. You can see we've got the Chris Titus Tech tool showing up as our first option. The command we wanna use is this IWR web HTTPS. So I'm gonna copy it from his website. You can get this information from GitHub as well. So on GitHub, it gives you information about this as well as the commands, or you can just go to his website. I will put the command below. All you need to do is basically right click on the Windows icon, and select this option, Terminal Admin. You're gonna to want to allow this app to make changes to your device, so I'm gonna click Yes there, and notice I have got a PowerShell window open. This is PowerShell, it's not CMD. So notice at the top here it says PowerShell, 
and I'm going to right click to paste the command into PowerShell. So again, all you need is this command, which I've put below, or you can get this from Chris's website. Now, disclaimer is always with this type of thing. You take responsibility for running this command on your computer. You take responsibility for installing any software on your computer. Chris is well-respected. This is a fantastic tool, highly recommended that you use it. But as always, you take responsibility for running any tool. Okay, so what I'll do now is press enter and this will run some software. You can get a paid version of this where you run this offline. I'm not doing that, I'm simply running the free version. So you can see we've got Chris Titus Tech Windows Toolbox and here it displays. So on this tool, you've got various options. One of the first things I wanna do is install Brave. I don't wanna use Edge. So I'll leave that in the background so that you can see what's going on. And then I'm gonna say install upgrade applications. So as you can see there, it's now queuing Brave. Basically all you need to do now is wait for that app to be installed. Okay, so as you can see there, installs have finished. If I search for Brave now, notice that app is installed on my computer. I highly recommend that you use Brave rather than other browsers such as Edge. So when you start up Brave in the beginning, it says privacy by default, set it as the default browser, I would say yes. I'm not gonna import anything because this is a brand new install. You might wanna import stuff from Microsoft Edge. And then I'll say, set this up later. I'm not going to contribute and send diagnostic information, etc. And I'm gonna click finish. And there I have Brave installed. Now you might wanna customize this to get rid of some of the stuff like the background images, the Brave stats, the top sites, the clock, the cards, you might wanna hide all of these. I typically don't want the VPN and the other stuff. So I'm gonna hide that. The news, I don't want. So that allows me to have a very basic setup in Brave, but that's up to you. It's a much better browser than other browsers such as Edge. You could, as an example, install Firefox. Okay, so now what we wanna do is let's go to tweaks and I'm gonna select standard here. That allows me to, as an example, disable telemetry. I mean, do you really want Microsoft spying on you the whole time? Notice on Chris's website, it says disables Microsoft telemetry. Note, this will lock many Edge browser settings. Microsoft spies heavily on you when you use the Edge browser. So you definitely don't wanna use Edge. So we're gonna disable telemetry. What about location tracking? Do you really want Microsoft to track you? So it disables location tracking. I mean, come on, it's ridiculous what they're doing. But what about stuff like this? Disable Wi-Fi Sense. Wi-Fi Sense is a spying service that phones home all nearby scanned Wi-Fi networks and your current geolocation. So do you really want Microsoft to know where you are in the world all the time? Give them your location plus all Wi-Fi networks. I don't think so. So I wanna disable that. So there are various options here. So you could go for minimal as an example, or standard or clear all the options. I'm gonna just go with standard to go with some of his recommended settings. Notice as an example, you can change settings here like dark theme for Windows, Bing search in start menu. I'm gonna disable that. I don't wanna use Bing search. Recommendations in start menu, I don't want that. Show hidden files, I want. Various options can be set here. I personally would disable IPv6. I know a lot of people will say you shouldn't do that, but I don't want my location and other information shown with IPv6. There's also vulnerabilities with IPv6, so I would personally disable that. I'll also prefer IP version four over IPv6. Whole bunch of options here. If you're not sure, just go with standard. Again, with all this kind of stuff, you run this at your own risk. But Chris, once again, comes highly recommended. Very, very good software, this. Okay, another option that you probably want to disable is this Windows Platform Binary Table, WPBT. There have been a numerous security vulnerabilities with regards to this. No real reason to use this, so disable it. Have a look online if you're not sure about this, but there are issues with using this, so I would remove that if I were you. IPv6, again, up to you. If you unsure, go with standard and then disable this WPv8 from a security point of view. Otherwise, do some research to see what to disable, and then once you've done that, you can run the tweaks to get the changes made on your system. So I'm gonna run those tweaks now, and what will happen is notice stuff is running 
in this PowerShell window. It's gonna take some time, so I'm going to let it run. Notice as an example, a system restore point has been created successfully. That's because we told it to create a restore point before we continue removing stuff. Now this script is gonna take some time, so I'm going to let it run and speed up the video at this point. What we will need to do at the end of this is reboot the computer to make all those changes. But at this point, I'll simply speed up the video. Okay, so there you go, the tweaks are finished. You can see this has got a little checkbox. So things are done now. What I will do at this point is reboot my computer because of all the changes that have been made. So I'm going to restart it now. As you can see, the computer is restarting. Okay, I'll log back in. Okay, so it's booted up now. What I'm gonna do is run my terminal again as administrator. So this is PowerShell again, and I'm gonna run Chris's tool again, just to check various options. So again, I've installed Brave on this computer. I could, as an example, decide to install Firefox. So select Firefox and install that. And there you go, Firefox is now being installed. This tool makes it really easy to do things. And there you go, installs have finished and we got a little checkbox on PowerShell. Great thing for me here is the fact that you can remove a bunch of the trash on Windows, a lot of the tracking stuff. And what you'll find is that processes get reduced dramatically when you uninstall a bunch of nonsense. I just went with the standard options here. You could disable a whole bunch of things if you wanted to. So as an example, remove Adobe Network Block, Adobe Debloat. So remove a lot of the trash from Adobe as an example. Adobe, another terrible company when it comes to tracking as well as like forcing stuff on you. Now, one of the options that he doesn't have disabled by default is recall. I don't think you should ever run recall on a Windows computer, but I'm gonna leave it on this one just for demo purposes, but that's up to you. A bunch of options available here, allowing you to remove trash from your computer. Okay, under updates, I personally select security settings. So that is now updated. Please note that doesn't work for home, however. So it needs group policies to get this to work. So it will not work on Windows Home. So you might have to set this manually on a Windows Home install. Under config, what's great here is some options in Windows have been removed. So as an example, printer panel, just like that, I can see those options, which are very hard to find, if not impossible to find in Windows. He has power. I can look at my old version of control panel. So as an example, computer management, as simple as that to find options in Windows. There are a whole bunch of options in the software that you can look at. So installing specific software, uninstalling specific software, tweaks, config, updates, etc., that you can use. You might wanna remove some of the Windows software as an example, or install various software here. And he gives the options here to install it. Like as an example, Putty is a great piece of software that I often use. So I could select that and install it. I'm not gonna try and show you all the options in the software. Have a look at Chris's YouTube channel, fantastic YouTube channel, which I'll link below. Goes through many, many other options in his software. Uh, have a look at his website but great piece of software worth downloading and having a look at, and look at supporting Chris as well. So pay the money to get an offline version of his software and have a look at some of the options here. Now, another piece of software that I think is really good is Revo Uninstaller. So you may prefer to use this rather than Chris's tool, but Chris's tool is fantastic. I'm gonna download the free software. Okay, so Revo Uninstaller has downloaded. I'll double click on the software to install it, so yes to allow it to make changes. I'm gonna accept the license agreement and I'm going to create a desktop shortcut and install the software and then run it. Now you can see straight away there's a bunch of trash on this computer. Like now I've got Microsoft OneNote and different languages. I've got software that I don't really want, like this StoryCube service installer. I have got a bunch of trash in Windows. So you can uninstall all this stuff. Another option is under tools or to run, I don't want Edge to start up initially. I don't want OneDrive to start up initially. Look at all this stuff that starts up straight away. So I'm gonna unselect some of those so that they don't run every time Windows starts up. 
like this cube starter, but you might just want to remove software. So what software do you want to remove? Let's say news as an example. I don't want the news showing up when I start up Windows. So I'm going to remove news. You can create a restore point so that you can restore this if something goes wrong. So I'll do that and then click continue. And then I'm going to scan for anything that's left over, select it all and then delete it. So delete all the trash that's left behind. And there you go, that software has been removed. So have a look at Revo installer. You can uninstall lots of trash, like I wanna uninstall McAfee here. So I'm going to remove it. I've made a system restore point before, so I'm not gonna do that here. I'm simply going to get rid of it and remove it. There's so much bloatware and trash that comes with Windows. So I'm gonna get rid of some of this trash. I'll restart later, run a scan. Select all and delete all this trash. Select all, delete it, and then click finish. You need to decide what you want, but I mean, why I've got all this nonsense here, I don't know. I'm going to get rid of all of this. Just seems to me that Microsoft has so much trash. And unfortunately, you either move to Linux or you spend some time getting rid of all the trash on your operating system. Okay, so those are the tools that I reckon that you should run straight away. I'm recommending these because I have used them as well as seen lots of recommendations for them. But what do you recommend? Are there other tools that you think are better? Are there other tools that you use to de-bloat Windows, stop the tracking, etc.? Are there other options that you'd recommend that I use within Chris's tool or within Revo Uninstaller? What are your comments? Oh, let me know. Please put your comments below and let me know what you think. Otherwise, I'm David Bombal and I want to wish you all the very best.